they read everything with their mind they understand everything with their mind but they don't know the mind they grasp everything with the intellect but they don't know the intellect it is their consciousness that percolates in them to make them eminent scientists and technocrats but they don't know about the technology and science of their consciousness and god makes everything and the made creatures they don't realize god so uh, this is uh, the wonderful pun of the world in which uh, the real basic element is not understood and when it is understood we can prevent three things one whatever that we do is limited and that is not serving the mass its limitation number two whatever that we invent now as something good it becomes adverse Number three, whatever we think that we are doing it, it becomes futile. It gives no result. Whenever the fundamentals are known, these three endangering hazards of making it futile are semi-fruitful or adverse. All of these things can be prevented. And the real prospective providential source of scientific shower and benevolence to the society can be bestowed indubitably. So, the intelligence must be first governed with self-analysis. Your own instincts. What are the problems you have? See, the person's intelligence is eroded with instincts. That is the difference between computer and human being. Number one, a computer has no emotion. Computer has no emotion at all. All of the data that has been fed inside is made for uninterrupted self-processing, except by mechanical errors or interruptive errors from other side to virus or something else. It is not having emotions at all. For example, shall I say a small thing? To read a lesson in, for example, computational logistics, you are reading one lesson. For that lesson, you are spending 10 units of your intellect. Gunika, 10 units you spend. Simultaneously, you are scolding at a person <coughs> or being avaricious of something or jealous. That consumes 20 units. <laughs> that type of erosion or reduction is not there in computer. Human being is a medley of various emotional biological instincts no doubt he is taking the intellectual journey as a goal of his life either for a profession or for confession he takes that but the computer or any mechanical system they are determined for that that's why they used to say workaholic those who are having a mechanical approach of work they used to say such similes to people yantra manushya so because they are very much dedicated to that there are two problems Total dedication to this type of insentient ergonomical conditions that also erodes your human instincts. And uh, diverting your instincts towards uh, the mean instincts, such as awareness, jealousy, etc., they are mean instincts. So, there are two processes for that. Kindly note down one is repension, second is rectification, third is reduction. When possible, you can reduce it. So, first of all, repension, Swadosha Nyapana, they used to say, Daily if you are a person and uh, if you must have a research lab, experimental lab, I have already mentioned yesterday, if a person reads Vedas, more prana is imbibed, so that more prana is uh, retained inside his baka, by which he lives for more years, if it is properly applied. Then I told them to have a phonometric lab, like that of the cognitive research lab, I went there and asked at Allahabad, they are having for all emotions, separate research. Department of Cognitive Sciences, Janak Pandey is the director. And Bits Pilani is having for consciousness management. And Maharishi Mahashyogi is having for transcendental meditation. The impact of meditation, meditation in human bodies and the mind vibrations are felt, recorded, then diversified into applications. Likewise, why can't the ETH make a lab, experimental lab, for understanding the computational functions of consciousness? It can be proved. So, repension, reduction and rectification. First you repent, then try to reduce. And your utmost goal may be rectification. Because most of your intelligence is governed, controlled, eroded and debilitated by these cheap instincts. Which is not where their computer. Number two, you are having a process of manifestation. Computer has no process of manifestation. If there is a small infant, it must grow to some age and it must be properly fed. Because that human being's biological evolution is progressive and processive. You know that, no? It is processive. It takes steps. Likewise, uh, just as you are feeding uh, some GB or MB inside your disc or inside a chip, you cannot feed everything inside a human being, except it is possible by a preternatural transmitting element. 
a supernatural transmitter like a divine personality or somebody immediately transmitting by a neural image capacitor by which all the brain imprints are immediately transferred just as it exists between uh, the machine interfaces. So human beings, you require a process of learning. You must be fed with morsels. You cannot be just uh, dumped with barrels. You must be fed with morsels. Whereas computer being mechanical in nature and as that is processive and manifestative in nature and it is non-manifestative and processive, it is immediately adaptable. So computer works more than that. Hmm? This is right. And number third thing is human beings, they require application. They require application whereas they require uploading. Uploading is already designed message that is fed inside. That is like ready-made knowledge. It is ready-made knowledge marketing or market of knowledge feeding. Whereas whatever we have through books, they cannot be done like that. They are not just ready-made. They have to be analyzed and they have to be developed. And uh, the final most thing is human beings brain is having two energies, two major energies. The first energy is to identify and understand its own strength. To identify and understand its own strength. And number two, it is having such a creative intelligence of producing elements by analysis with nature and its components to produce such elements which are more potential in multiple proportions. So the first brain's energy is to understand its own nature and energy. See, for example, the person who has invented or possessed a bike cannot run faster than the bike. The person who has invented the plane, he cannot fly with the plane, he can fly in the plane. Likewise, the first energy, the first energy is the self-assessing energy in which it assesses its energy and applies it. Second is creative energy by which it understands the greatness of the components that are already available in the nature and surroundings they understand them and applies it with the, the composers. They just assembles those things. For example, if there is an aeroplane, it requires part, it requires mechanism, it requires a lot of things like avionics, like aerostatistics, dynamics. So shaping it, engineering, then positioning, then hazard management, risk management, safety and security, comfort factor, everything is read gradually. So this is not a creative energy from brain. So human beings, they cannot do everything by their own. But at the same time, they know how to deal with the other ages which can do and how to cleverly apply them. Likewise, human beings are capable of dealing with inferior, superior, ultra and infra species of the world. They can deal with the God, even though he is just a macroscopic structure, unintelligible than him. By the rope of devotion, he can be binded. They can converse with the great personalities, rishis and celestials by means of their offerings, rituals, penance and austerity. They can converse with animals and birds by their eco-friendly nature and by their psychoanalytical approach and also by the process of their taming and training with domestication process of animals. They can move with everything, adapting themselves to them or adapting them to their own nature. They can do that. They can have a super eco-communication technology. If they properly apply it, they can be the friend of the universe, making everybody the friends of global culture and betterment. Likewise, a computer which has been made by a human being it has an uninterrupted power because of its natural fed up messages which are processive but not requiring manifestation which are there made by the processing of a human being itself. You see, who made the processing, who made the updating and uploading etc. It is made by the human being. So, what is the speciality of a computer? The speciality of a computer is the greatness of a person, what is known as memory, what is known as Smriti? <coughs> we have already dealt with the Smriti in various contexts. Memory is an ornament of intellect. Memory itself is not intellect. Memory is an ornament. It must require understanding, rejoicing knowledge and also the cognitive skill of memory, not short term memory which you acquire before the day of examination and forget very wonderfully after the day of examination. That is a short term memory. Nobody can produce. Even I have never produced after the day of examination. Because that is a compulsion in which we don't have, we have uh, our own attachment towards the fruit, not the action. For example, if you drink bitter medicine, why you are drinking in spite of being bitter? Because your health is sweet for you. So, as health is sweet for you, even though the process or the channel is bitter, you take that. 
Likewise, you want the degree or graduation 